Hello, I'd like to make another video clip explaining the use of the pharyngeal voice. Now, in um, the bel canto uh, repertoire, this is used um, a lot. This was used uh, in olden times, say about the 1800s, and a little bit beyond that. <clears throat> as people sang with chest voice up until about G or A, depending on what voice they were, and then switched over literally into a falsetto type of voice. Now, later on, the laryngeal voice um, was trained to integrate some of the chest voice and thereby allowing the voice to go really <clears throat> up high and comfortably without raising the larynx too much. The pharynx, which is up top, here you have the larynx and here you have the pharynx. The pharynx become a little bit narrower, but the larynx doesn't rise if you do the pharyngeal voice correctly. So if you were <clears throat> to go up in chest voice, there's your chest voice. Now, if I want to continue, as I'm a bass and I can't really continue up in chest or even um, quite integrated chest uh, beyond that without pushing, I can I can tip the scales until A natural and that's about it. Um, then the pharyngeal voice is used a lot in um, popular music also, but in the bel canto repertoire where you hear um, where you hear the uh, la fille du régiment, where the tenor has to sing. High seas. <clears throat> Before we go there, let's see um, the transition of um, chest voice to pharyngeal voice. Can be quite subtle. It does. It doesn't need to be uh, an abrupt break in voice. <laughs> chest. <laughs> So I've used, I started out in chest and I went up with the pharyngeal voice, the mix head voice, already up to C, without pushing or anything. I don't ri raise the larynx, <clears throat> I have a bit of a cold, forgive me, <clears throat> so. bit of a Chris Pringle there. <coughs> mm. Hay fever and all. So if you attempt to use the pharyngeal voice, I would try a lot lower, maybe on E above middle C, try and um, first get a falsetto sound, which is a disconnected sound. I've been asked what's the difference between head voice and falsetto. Falsetto is a, a, a loose tone which you cannot do anything with. It's um, it's actually separated from the support. I can't do anything with that except make an ugly sound. Now, if I connected the sound to the support, I can come out of that sound and mix more chest. So if you start with the um, C on E, you start in a mixed sound.
And if you take the, um, the sudden jump to the head voice, you'll hear when I come down, there's a break. On the A flat A natural, I tend to mask the sound a little bit by taking back the volume so you don't hear a loud yodel there. But there is a break. Passaggio of the higher voice, the tenor, would be on FF sharp. Uh, which is not my natural passaggio, that lies a lot lower, that lies on B flat below C. So the use of pharyngeal voice, why, you might ask, well, why, why would I need it? Um, depending on the repertoire that you sing, uh, tenors will use it as uh, effect notes, if they have extreme high notes like high Ds, or even high E's, which I'm not going to demonstrate right here. But um, this is very heady and uh, the sound will be ringy at the same time. So, um, what um, well, I was asked, well, how do you differentiate the, the different voice types? Well, you can say that the, the, the male voice, oops, male came in, um, the male voice has, <clears throat> the vocal cords are measured about a 24 to 25 millimeter, and the, the tenor about, I would say, 18 to 20 millimeter, millimeters, and so they're a little bit shorter, the tenors, uh, vocal cords. Now, this is just a scientific fact. It doesn't mean that, oh, I have shorter vocal cords, I'm a tenor. No, it has to do with the build of the larynx, the, the passaggios, the, uh, the integration of where the, where the voice turns. So, uh, here. So. C for me. The tenor would be here. Sorry. Would be the turning point of the voice, a girare, of uh, the tenor. This is where the tilt comes in. Larynx and the pharynx um, gets a little bit narrower, but the larynx stays low. <laughs> Passaggio for tenor. The baritone, however, D. When you have that turn in the voice, you can easily continue depending on the voice type that you are. So this is bass, baritone and tenor. <clears throat> the tenor can start um, almost on any tone. I would say below middle C it becomes a little bit of a, a guessing game depending on what the voice will allow you to do. Baritone can easily go down to an A below middle C and um, maybe even there's not standards for that G. The bass should be able to go down to F E standard. So these are just um, directions for what is standardly a bass range, a baritone range, a tenor range. 
the tenor range, <clears throat> I would say I'd just start on middle C up until high C. And sometimes the more dramatic tenor uh, will not especially want to go up to the high C. Then the B flats will be um, sufficient depending on the repertoire. The B natural will be necessary too. For the baritone, you'll need your high G. And uh, whether you sing the Verdi rec uh, repertoire or the, um, the lyric, if you sing Valentin, Avant de quitter ce lieu, uh, Valentine's aria from Faust, you have. And you go to the high G. Um, baritones, uh, basses will not want to do that, or cannot do that mostly. And F is usually enough depending on uh, the aria. Um, if it's a very flexible aria, you may tip the scale to an F sharp or just stay on the F. So, a little bit of information on the different uh, voice categories for the male voice. The female voice, you can um, compare it to the male voice, but it's just a full octave higher. So whatever is here is up there. And then you can rain, um, decide well, okay, uh, soprano, mezzo, alto. Uh, of course, the coloraturas tend to go beyond the high C. They have this extension. Okay. I hope this clarifies it a little bit. Please subscribe if you like and comment.